Good morning, everyone. My name is Casey Anderson, and I'm with the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support. We'd like to thank you for joining the webinar today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. The first is that in order to track the attendance for today's webinar, we'd appreciate it if you would enter the chat box and add your name and affiliation so that we can download the chat log and track who's been here. Secondly, um, there will be a number of polls that run throughout the, the webinar and we'd very much appreciate your uh, participation in those polls. And finally, I wanna notify everyone that today's webinar will be recorded and will be made available for viewing upon conclusion. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Diana Robinson from Northern Illinois Un University Center for Governmental Studies and Laura Dahm from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity to lead us through this presentation on service integration self-assessment. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Laura. Um, hi, Diana. <laughs> um, we just want to um, lead off with a uh, policy, uh, an apology on the short notice uh, for this webinar. We are trying to uh, put them together as quickly as we can and we had a little bit of mixed signals. So we are uh, working um, towards getting that rectified and we are recording today's webinar so that others can access it if they weren't able to attend in person today. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending um, to remind everyone that uh, they're muted and that we will open up uh, for questions later on. Uh, but in the meantime, you can type any questions that you have in the chat pod and we will address them as we can. Um, the PDF of the presentation is also in the handouts um, pod as well as the latest version of the self-assessment. Uh, so today's purpose uh, of today's webinar is to provide a synopsis of the changes to the service integration self-assessment since we've presented it at the WIOA Summit. And we want to follow through with the commitment that we uh, made to everyone to provide additional ongoing technical assistance. We're going to detail the seven functions and 15 goals of the service integration policy. We plan to outline the self-assessment process, discuss the submission procedures, talk about the opportunity to become a pilot site and obtain your feedback on key questions. Since the summit, um, there have been some changes in the self-assessment process because um, discussing with WinTAC, WinTAC's model is based on six functions. The Illinois framework is the seven functions with 15 sub goals. And so therefore, we all agreed that we needed a two-phase process as compared to WinTAC's single partners meeting. The integrated business service team with the Illinois Workforce Innovation Board suggested some refinements to align the self-assessment with their framework, so those were incorporated. And the final document is being released uh, today on the webinar. However, we had, intend to make the appendices uh, fillable PDF forms. And we will, once we, that has been done, we will provide those at a later date. The self-assessment guide changes. We've included an overview of the self-assessment process uh, so that it's a little bit more defined. We've adjusted uh, service function goal one, services delivered by function in the guidelines, uh, which is Appendix B, to align with the serv business services framework that I've already talked about. We added a schedule of planning events for service integration self-assessment, which is Appendix C, uh, after several um, questions regarding um, the sequence of events. We revised the small group participant forms so that it lists the goals underneath each function so it's a little bit easier to follow and differentiate where everyone's at with each goal versus the overall function. And we've replaced the small group facilitator form with a summary of service integration uh, partner self-assessment so that it's a little bit easier to follow. Uh, the facilitator will have a different looking form so it should be a little bit easier to follow. Um, there's important considerations uh, that we want to talk about. The self-assessment is a work in progress. There is flexibility in this. It is a guide. It's not a set of rigid requirements. And we want all the local workforce areas to do what works for them and report back to us on how it worked. And the IWIB will revisit the policy and the self-assessment guide at the end of this first cycle. 
and see what worked well, what didn't work, and take your recommendations and your real life situations and make appropriate changes to the policy and the guide as necessary. And we wanted to make sure that everyone understood that state partners are committed to ensuring that the needs of the local areas are addressed. And if there's any way that we can assist, you please let us know. Uh, we do have several avenues um, for, to provide technical assistance to local areas, and if that's needed, we want to make sure that we get that information out to you. Once again, here's the integration continuum. I'm sure everyone has this memorized. Um, we have the five steps from isolation, communication, coordination, collaboration, all the way up to integration. And this is uh, part of the uh, self-assessment guide that will be sent out to the partner agencies so that they are aware of it and do the complete their part of the self-assessment prior to meeting as a whole with the facilitator so that they'll all be aware of it so when they come in for the larger meeting that you're hitting the ground running and you're not starting from brand new. So we have uh, some questions here. We'd like to know where you're at with implementation and what have you done so far. So our first polling question is, have you begun the service integration process? And we just kind of like to know uh, where everyone is with that. So the poll should be open. Okay. All right. Uh, now we have another polling question. Who is taking the lead on the self-assessment? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Diana. Before we go on, um, this is the first time that I've done this with polling questions. Um, how do we know what the responses are? There we know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's great. So, okay, Laura, back to you. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, the second polling question is, who is taking the lead on the self-assessment process in your local workforce area? Um, do you have, you know, who is it? Are you a facilitator or what? So uh, let us know, and the poll should be open. I'm not able to see the poll, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm assuming that it's uh How do I end? There we go. Yes, we are viewing the poll. We're at about 65% uh, polling. OK. OK, fantastic. And uh, polling question three. If you have begun the self-assessment process, what activities have you undertaken? And there should be a listing here of those activities. So please complete the poll. Thank you very much. OK, 
Okay, we wanted to discuss the function goals and outcomes. Uh, these are outlined in the service integration policy from the IOM, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we put them front and center in front of everyone again. We have, the again, the seven goals, customer center design, staff goals, intake and assessment, um, service goals, career pathways, information goals, and an evaluation goal. And under each goal, we have at least one or underneath, I'm not, sorry, those were the functions, and underneath each function is at least one goal, and those are listed here. Um, the customer center design goal is that uh, one-stop partners collect and use customer input to design and deliver integrated services to all job seekers, employers, and system customers. And then and the outcome that the IWIB would expect to see from this goal. Again, we just wanted to make sure that everyone was familiar with the functions and the goals because as I've stated before, we have altered um, the appendix for the um, participant form, and we wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of these so that when we got there in the shortened form, you knew exactly what we were talking about. So these are the first three functions, and then these are the last four functions, the service goals, career pathways, information goals, and evaluation goals. Now we want to go over the planning events. Uh, this is uh, included uh, in the self-assessment guideline, and we wanted to let everyone know what we've got planned and what uh, this, the stepping stones that need to happen in order to complete the self-assessment. Um, we've set these up so it's uh, distinguished by planning, partner planning, system level planning, and the L LWIBs and the one-step operators, as well as the IWIB. Um, so now in June, uh, June 12th for C, we are doing the webinar on self-assessment. Uh, on the 26th, we are have, expecting to have another webinar on effective practices. In July, we tentatively have scheduled three additional webinars, building and supporting an accountable one-stop culture, one-stop certification, and strategies to implement successful collaboration. So those should assist um, in doing the self-assessment. Um, and the, just uh, go ahead, Diana. I think it, also, Laura, I wanted to mention that uh, these webinars are basically encore presentations of some of the sessions that were um, offered at the April WIOA Summit. Exactly right, backed by popular demand, as you said before, because <laughs> um, the the attendees suggested that they wanted to see these again and that they wanted to, these to be presented so that a broader audience could see them. So, again, we are bringing those back. Thanks, Diana. Um, the partner planning as far as uh, identifying the uh, participating agencies and stakeholders, meet, you know, July 1st, you should be looking at meeting uh, info sent to the partners. The 29th through the 2nd, you should have somewhere in there, you should have those partner self-assessments uh, held. Again, this is a loose time frame. It's up to local areas on how fast or how slow they want to do this process but it is due to the IWIB by September 30th. Um, again, different things as far as the LWS system plant level planning, creating the teams, determining the logistics, selecting a facilitator or coordinator, setting the date and time and location of the meetings, um, sending out to save the dates that's included as part of the, of the self-assessment, um, and actually having those meetings, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, the self-assessment participants, um, core and required partners um, are supposed to be there as well as any other stakeholders that the board thinks should be part of this process. Again, this is part of uh, determining where you're at currently and determining where you want to be and how you're going to get there. So all stakeholders involved in the one-stop system should be involved in the process. Uh, as far as employer engagement goes, we know that employers are the hardest stakeholder to engage and that they typically get bombarded from all uh, the different uh, partners at one point in time. So it will be up to each local board to determine when and how to involve their employers. But each employer perspective should be solicited for the regional planning efforts. So we have another polling question. Are you planning to engage employers in your self-assessment process?
thank you. On the process overview, when we had discussions with WinTech, again, they had done a single group um, meeting. And what we have determined uh, after talking with WinTech and looking at Illinois' um, seven functions and 15 goals is that we needed a, a two-step process. So step one is each of the participating partner M entities at the LVL level will conduct a self-assessment for the, on their own. And they're going to identify where they fall on the continuum for the goals. And they're going to s discuss and agree um, at the partner level for the priority actions that they need to move themselves forward on the um, continuum to meet the goals. And then each partner team should have not only their leadership and mid-management, but frontline staff participate in these discussions in order to complete their self-assessment. Um, they, you know, you may want to, uh, the LWA may want to have other stakeholders and employers um, may wish to field a team, but um, these conversations should occur locally with skilled facilitators or be invited to a lar large regional venue for gr a group facilitation. Uh, step two is each partner team will select a representative to carry their priorities to the next step, which is a meeting of all the LWEA partners and stakeholders. And that in that meeting, you're going to identify priorities and beginning, begin action planning. In that meeting, everyone is going to agree where the LWEA falls on the service integration continuum for the goals. They're going to develop consensus around which goals and activities should be priorities. And they're going to form teams to develop these action plans to further themselves on the continuum. The result of this second activity will be used in the local and regional uh, WIOA planning for um, local plans and regional plans. And as with this first step, facilitators can work with a, a local workforce area teams locally, or they can travel to do a regional group facilitation. So we have a couple of polling questions here. Polling question five. Would you like facilitation assistance from WinTAC? Thank you. And polling question six, would you be interested in a group facilitation held at a regional venue? And just to clarify that one, that could be either at the partner level where you would uh, bring the different partner teams together to a different location um, or the, uh, the local workforce area level one where all of the partners would come together to decide on priorities and action steps. Okay, thank you. The submission, once you get through those meetings, the following documentation must be submitted electronically to Mark Burgess on behalf of the iWeb uh, by uh, September 30th, end of close of business. We're going to ask for the completed service integration self-assessment identifying information, which is uh, as it is, a copy of the report on the process and results of the LWIB, copies of the completed Appendix G, which is the small group participant form for each participating agency with the names of the completers. Uh, they can be re redacted as long as the partner or program affiliation is indicated. A uh, summary of service. Um, Integration self-assessment is Appendix H, and the next step action planning tool, which is Appendix I. And Excuse if me, they Laura, have, before, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, could could we put that slide up right now? We still have poll number six and seven <laughs> still in the poll. Let me get back to the PowerPoint. Here. Hang in there, Laura. We're still on the the quick poll slide. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 
know. It's it's. I think we're kind of working through the kinks here. Okay, we've got question seven of the quick poll. Okay. Um, we're actually having an issue with the poll. We're trying to Casey and I are trying to work through this. One moment, please. While we're waiting for the, the slide to come back, um, it's probably useful to note that the submission requirements are clearly outlined in the guide. Um, so you'll have a, a reference to that when you come, when it comes time to pull together the, uh, the information for the IWIB. Absolutely. And the steps are also outlined in the guide. Um, so hopefully uh, as well, and the uh, IWIB's service integration policy is incorporated into the guide, so um, hopefully that guide will then be a um, tool that is self-sustaining and that you can just use that tool to present to all of the partners and everyone that will be part of the um, meetings. I do have a couple of questions that have come in through the question board. This might be an opportune time to answer those. Do non-comprehensive one-stops have to do the self-assessment? The self-assessment is not at the one-stop level. The self-assessment is at the system level. So you have to look at this two ways, and this is one thing that Mark talks about, Mark Burgess talks about a lot is, the self-assessment is at the system level. The one-stop certification is at the one-stop level. So we're looking at the uh, system as a whole when we're doing the self-assessment. So it will be a single assessment for the entire system. Was there another question? There is another question. Please tell us again where we can locate the guide. The guide is actually attached in the handout section of this um, power of, of this presentation. Um, it's or in the um, pod here, the handouts pod. There's two handouts. One is the PowerPoint presentation from today, and another is the ser service integration self-assessment guide in a Word document. And again, we will be. Um, completing those forms and putting those forms into uh, PDF fillables and then sending those out at a later date once those are completed. Um, so that will make it easier for those to be uh, completed when you get together for your um, two meetings that you have. I was actually thinking, Laura, that we could perhaps have folks open the uh, the PowerPoint that's that's been uploaded to the handout pod, mm -hmm. and we could just continue the presentation that way, if they don't mind following along on their own steam. Yeah, I apologize. For some reason, the poll option is stuck and won't allow us to minimize it, so we're still working on it. But OK. There's so how about if we do? On the right, on the right-hand side of your screen, as Laura was pointing out, under the handouts, um, the top one reads the self-assessment presentation. You can open that, and then scroll down to slides aren't numbered, but um, submit. I think a slide toward the end in. called submission, and that's where Laura left off. Mm -hmm. And again. In case you're not able to get here quickly, this is also in the Service Integration Self-Assessment Guide itself, um, so you're not missing anything by not necessarily being able to see the slide um, on your screen. Um, you can go there as well. Um, but 
again, the submission documents are due to Mark Burgess by the 30th of September. Uh, he's collecting those on behalf of the IWIB. It would be um, appendix, basically, appendix G, H, I, and J, as well as a copy of any report um, that goes to the local board um, and any recommendations to the IWIB uh, that you have for improving the process. Um, those are the main things that we would be looking for um, for the submission. Laura, I believe we've resolved the issue. Can you um, okay. share your screen again? And I believe that will solve it. Let's see, and how do I share the screen again? I'm sorry. It should be at the <laughs> very top uh, in your little menu bar. There's uh, one that, there you go. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. All right, so here's the submission slide that we were just discussing. Next, we were going to talk about pilot sites. Um, we are offering local boards the opportunity to be a self-assessment pilot. And pilots will be able to complete the process sooner with assistance, um, have access to state agency and WinTech resources, and assist in helping us shape the process and the next round of service integration policy changes. Um, so you will help us flag potential difficulties and identify improvement opportunities. We've, right now, we have two LWEAs that have volunteered. Um, if we have other interested LWEAs, they should notify us by the end of this week, and we'll pick a small set of representative LWEAs, um, whether we have those spread across the state or do something where we can have them uh, regionally. Um, we would definitely look into that. So. Our, um, I don't know if are we able to get, do the polling next polling question to make sure to see if the LWEAs are interested in participating as a pilot site. Ah, it looks like it's working. Oh, that's right. You can't see it, Laura. Yeah, we have the the poll is up. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the results are 16% that yes, and I think around 62%, yep, were a maybe. Okay. And the rest were a no. Okay. Great. Yeah, it will definitely help. Okay, we also, we have frequently asked questions, and, and what we're doing for the self-assessment process is to add to the wheel implementation resources page in Illinois WorkNet, and we're going to add a a section on for a subcategory on service integration self-assessment underneath the FAQs. So if you're not familiar with that site, uh, I provided a link there for you to go and see um, all the different um, frequently asked questions out there on different subjects. Uh, we will be we are working with Illinois WorkNet to get something out there, and we will be posting um, updating the frequently asked questions with those asked today and anything that we get in in the meantime. So we have another polling question. How comfortable are you proceeding with the self-assessment after the WIOA Summit and listening to today's webinar? Okay, we have uh, more than half, have only a few concerns, but are ready to move, and about uh, one out of five don't quite know where to begin, <laughs> so oh, we have yeah. a little more outreach to do, I think. Three yeah. percent are very comfortable. Okay. All right. So definitely requiring more outreach. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you. 
Yes, so if you would like to assist us in populating this frequently asked questions, and you have, especially given the results of that poll, uh, please feel free to uh, send those questions in to me, and I will make sure that they get added to the frequently asked questions, and hopefully that will assist everyone in um, feeling a little bit more comfortable with this process. Are, uh, speaking of questions, do we have any more questions in the um, chat area? There are. Uh, so a couple of statements. One is, I will talk with my partners and get back with you. Whom do we contact specifically? Right now, that would be myself, Laura Dom. Um, and then I will make sure that any issues, if it's not something that we can uh, respond to, that we will get to the right people and make sure that we get a response to you as soon as we can. A second question is the last, and it's more of a note, the last pages of the guide need legal size paper to print. Can this be yes. fixed? Yes. Yes. I thought we, um, sorry, I thought we'd fix that. I thought they were on letter size. We will make sure that we do fix that. And there's a request to walk through the tool. Okay. And one last question, do you have the contact info for the pilot assessment that is due by the end of the week? That would be to myself as well. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in becoming a pilot, send me an email and we will make sure that you get added to that list. Okay. I think I have done this. Has have we had... provided your email address? I'm not sure if you have, but I will make sure to. Presenter, I believe. But yes. Yeah, I'm a presenter. Yes, but it is l o r a dot d h o m at illinois dot gov. I believe it's also on the last page of the uh, self-assessment guide. Okay. Now, do you see the guide? Do you have that up now? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. I just wasn't sure if it was sharing or not. This is the latest version. We'll definitely make sure that we take care of that issue with the uh, different size paper. Um, but we do have uh, the introduction is, is is pretty much the same. But what I'm sure that what, what you would like to uh, look at is the actual tools here. So we'll get down to those. I'm trying to go slow so I don't make anybody dizzy here. But we do discuss on how to frame the conversation. We do talk about the submission and what to submit. And there is my um, contact information there. Uh, for Mark, if you have any questions about submission, his contact information, and then my contact information if you have any questions about the process. So here is the Appendix A is the actual iWeb service integration policy. I'm just a Make sure that it's all inclusive in this guide so that you don't have to go elsewhere to have this information. Here is Appendix B, which is the guidelines. Uh, this is where we are looking specifically at the customer center design goal one. Um, and there's only one goal for customer center design. It talks about um, where, if you were in isolation, what that would look like. If you were in communication, what that would look like. If you're in the coordination stage of the continuum, what an example of what that would look like, and so on and so forth. And this uh, self-assessment guidelines is the same as what was presented at the WIOA Summit, with the exception of the business services section, uh, which we talked about earlier in the presentation. That was updated to include um, so that would align more with the IWIB's uh, business services team. Um, and so this is further in here. The next appendix is the Appendix C, which is the- All right, can you go back? I... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, the, the, it's the services goal, slow down. Yeah. Um, you can point out the, um, the business services one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there we are changed slightly from the previous one to make sure that we included the concerns of the IWIB. So. So there's 
Any right. questions on that? Okay. Uh, Appendix C is the um, scheduled planning events that we included in the PowerPoint, so that you have that in this document as well. Appendix D is just a partners list, um, so that we have a listing of all the core partners, and then we have a listing of all the required partners. And then we also have a listing of other partners that the LWIB may um, think that they may want to include in these conversations. Appendix E is the pre-meeting participant information form. This is basically a save the date. This is um, complete, uh, enter a date, enter the text as far as where the meeting is going to be held, and then this is basically a save the date, please join us for this discussion. And it gives a little bit of information about the continuum and talks about the guidelines. And you, of course, you would submit the guidelines with this save the date um, so that all of the partners can have that information prior to their, their first meeting themselves so they can work on this and do step one. Uh, Appendix F is an example of the meeting agenda. This is the larger meeting. This is step two. Uh, this is when they come together and, and have these, um, where the small groups or the participants, uh, partners share their individual ratings and go over it as a group and complete their function uh, for each function and goal area and have those uh, discussions as far as where the local area as a whole falls in the continuum for each one of those. Appendix G is the new um, small group participant form. And uh, we've tried to um, highlight this so that it's a little bit more um, the customer-centered design. Each function is now in red letters so that it's easier to follow and determine where you are um, since there are several of these. Uh, this is the goal, the single goal for the customer-centered design. The actual information required is not changed. It's just the layout of it. Um, and then we also, and here's the one for staff, so we have all four goals under staff. Um, so you can see what this form now looks like, so that it's a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined to complete. Uh, here's the one for intake and assessment and has the, the two goals for it, services, when we have the, the goals. And here's where we've separated out um, for the business services, so we have a sub goal for 1A, so that we show um, those level uh, levels of integration for specifically for business services for the IOM. And then career pathways, and then information, and then the last one is evaluation. So again, they they. They're laid out the same, they just include, they're just broken down by the specific 15 goals now. And then Appendix H, this is new, this is what our um, our summary looks like, our summary of service integration. Uh, so when the facilitator gets together and gets all the information together, they will then complete this appendix and list the different partners and list where all the partners thought that they fell on the continuum for each one of the goals and indicate whether that partner believes the priority to work further on this goal is low, medium, or high. And then that will then begin the discussions when everyone meets in order to um, fill out this next appendix, which is Appendix I, which is the next step action planning tool. And this is where you will work on what goals you're going to address, how you're going to address it, who's going to be involved in it, what outcomes you expect to see, when you expect to, to work on it, any questions or assistance needed. And this is where if you need assistance from um, state partners, WinTAC, or anyone else, then this is where we can pull that information and make sure that we get that, that uh, whether we have uh, webinars, if it turns out to be a, an um, overwhelming assistance needed from multiple local workforce areas um, or individual if we, it turns out that it's a, a situation specific to your local area. And then Appendix J is this just the identifying information. It's basically the cover 
to ensure that the self-assessments, the next step action planning tool, and other documents are incorporated into your submission to uh, the IWIB. So do we have any questions on that? Not on that specifically, but there are a couple other questions that came in. One okay. question that says, um, when will this webinar be available? Uh, it'll be available uh, within uh, the next hour uh, on our website. Uh, so the recording, once the recording is available. Say again. And then it will be shared via email as well. Okay. Another Great. question was, uh, is the participation in the self-assessment optional? Well, the core part and required partners are required to be a part of this. Um, if they're not um, part of the local workforce area, then they would probably not be um, included. Um, if they refuse to participate, then that needs to be noted on the Appendix H on the form um, that lists all of the different partners and where they feel that they are on the continuum, if that's something that needs to be addressed at a higher level at the um, work for Illinois Workforce Board level, then um, that's something that we need to know or if uh, it needs to be addressed at a state agency level, um, then we need to know that so that we can ensure that all of our partners are participating in this process to move the one-stop system along towards continuous improvement. That's all of the questions that we have. Okay. Fantastic. Well, if anyone thinks of anything else, um, again, uh, make sure that you email me, and uh, we will make sure that those get included in the frequently asked questions when that gets uh, up and going. Uh, I will make sure to send out something so that everyone knows that those uh, questions are now um, on the uh, WIOA implementation site of uh, WorkNet. There's and no if I could add just two points. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One is to emphasize uh, an earlier point that uh, Laura made about <clears throat> the flexibility of this process. Uh, this guide and the steps that are in it are intended to, to be one approach that you know, we thought through with the state partners and a number of, of LWIAs who were involved in the design of it. But if it doesn't look like it would work for you or you've got better ideas, um, you're certainly free to pursue those as well. And again, as Laura mentioned, we'd like to learn from you if indeed you do, you do go down a different path. Um, we certainly uh, don't have the, the last answer on the most effective process to use. And the other point is, if you um, do need additional information, a, a number of you had indicated that one-on-one -on -one TA might be helpful. A few of you weren't really quite sure yet where to begin. Um, if you can let Laura know who you are and the kind of assistance that you need, you know, we've got a number of, of partners and resources available, and we want to make sure that we connect you with um, whatever resources you need to, to get some traction on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well, I guess I get a final word. We have, I think, and I, I haven't seen yet who all's on the, the webinar, but uh, I, I'm sure a number of folks who have been involved in these discussions are participating. Um, is there an opportunity to provide them with um, a, a pulpit here if they want to share anything? I don't know if, if they want to identify themselves in chat or um, if they can raise their hand somehow. Yeah, if they un identify themselves in chat, we might be able to pull them in and have them say a word or two. Okay. If you could let us know who those individuals are. Yep, Pam Ferlin. Oh, great. Okay, just bear with us one second while we pull her in. Um,
Yes, you can unmute her. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I, I guess I just have a actually a couple questions as well. I'm just wondering, like, is there any way we know how many different partners or how many different areas are on the webinar so we can kind of get an idea if, you know, everybody is aware of this um, or is it kind of consolidated into just one or two partners? That was one of my, I don't know, my questions, I guess, just in general. Um, but just a comment on what we've done. Um, I think, you know, with some tremendous leadership from uh, Diana and, and others in the IWIB, um, we tried to make this whole process um, as meaningful as possible. And we spent a lot of time fi uh, refining and re-refining the goals and the, um, uh, the different steps. So I guess, you know, like we've been saying, it's a guide. It's certainly not, um, it's not the final answer but we hope it's something that everybody can use fairly simple. I really like the idea of it being fillable, a fillable document, because that'll make it easier as we're going through this. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, like I said, that there's much else to say, but I'd be happy to respond to anybody's questions. Pam, we did try to um, determine who all uh, is on the webinar by having individuals type in the, in, in the chat box in the beginning who they were and, and who they were with and, and what LVO they were with. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to gather some information off of that and make sure that uh, we've reached as broad as audience as possible. But if we determine looking at that, that we might have some holes in who attended, then we'll make sure to share the presentation in the webinar and make sure that um, everyone has the opportunity to see it. Yeah, I just think it would help for us to know, especially in our local areas, you know, if we had a, a great attendance on the, the webinar, I know it's going to be um, archived, so obviously people would have the opportunity to uh, for a second chance to take a look at it, but um, just out of curiosity, so we kind of know what we, what we can expect going forward. That's a great point, and I'd also like to kind of pick up on on that, if when you all were good enough to sign in on the chat box, um, if you put down your agency affiliation, if you could also indicate which uh, local workforce innovation area you're with, that'll help us make sure that we get kind of a, a better sense of, of who's, who's aware and, and who's not yet, so we can do some targeted outreach. And if you've already submitted that info, don't worry about putting it in twice, it'll just help us kind of sort through the... Uh, 142 of you who are on the webinar. And Diana, we will also make sure that you are shared a copy of the registration report that will include everyone who has um, attended and the question log that does that it, people are logging their uh, affiliation into as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Well, with that, I think I want I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, again, please make sure that you submit any questions to myself, um, and I will make sure that those are um, answered or that we uh, make sure that the people that need to answer those are brought into the discussion. Um, I appreciate everyone taking the time to be a part of this, and uh, thank you, and have a good day. Thank you.